In Norway, there are around 700,000 electric cars. That may not sound like much, but that is around 25% of all cars in the entire country. This number is growing at an alarming rate, with more than 80% of all cars sold being fully electric. And in less than 18 months, new non-EVs are going to be banned altogether. This is Oslo, the capital of Norway, with a metropolitan population of more than 1.5 million people, it ranks as the 46th most populous city in Europe. So nothing special and literally an average-sized European city. But with 77,000 electric cars, more than 36% of all cars in Oslo are purely battery-powered. That is more than petrol-powered cars at 35% and diesel-powered cars at 29%. All of this sounds great, but it also brings a huge challenge for the future of Norway, for the future of Oslo, and for the future of electric cars in general. This is me, my name is Chris and I drive an EV. Pretty cool, huh? A Porsche Taycan, the most awesome, spectacular EV in the world. This isn't actually my Porsche Taycan. Let me explain, I actually do daily a Porsche Taycan 4 Cross Turismo, but the other day, filming a video about reliability, my window regulator broke and the window won't close. So my car is actually in for repair and this Taycan Turbo, a much more expensive, a much faster electric car than mine is actually my loaner. So some benefits are there to owning and driving an expensive electric car, except for depreciation. Yeah, that is for a completely different video. But I transitioned to electric cars three years ago from a hybrid. Before that, I had a diesel and then another diesel, you know, the typical European story. And the transition was completely seamless. I mean, no problems at all. I had an Audi e-tron 55 for a year, did 25,000 kilometers in that car. And then I bought an Audi e-tron GT. I had that for a few months, did 10,000 kilometers. And then for the past 20 months, 35,000 kilometers, I've dailyed a Porsche Taycan 4 Cross Turismo. And here in Oslo, in Norway, driving an electric car on a daily basis has not been an issue, an inconvenience, or a problem at all. For the longest time, actually most of the time, I've owned these three cars, I've had street parking with no home chargers. And also, on top of that, I drive electric cars for this YouTube channel, which is my job. So, you know, in addition to those 80,000 kilometers I've done in my own cars, I've probably done close to 250,000 kilometers in other electric cars in this same time period. So I'd like to say that I probably have more experience than most people. But granted, a lot of those 250,000 kilometers have been outside of the city, and a lot of that has been across Europe. But again, not a problem at all but you wouldn't think that you know listening to a lot of the mainstream media and also a lot of youtube videos here especially car channels have a very different view of owning an electric car the the claim that you can charge a take from zero to 80 percent on a fast charger in 20 minutes is crap and the third are some more of my thoughts about electric cars in general some things that i think might surprise you what this whole journey has really taught me the future is certainly a very uncertain one there's still too many electric chargers that are badly maintained and out of service the government has a vision for a future where all our cars will be electric but this is just magical thinking. It can't happen. But the problem is, if you arrive at a charging station like this and you've got no battery, you're down to your last five miles, what do you do? And uh, if you say anything, anything about, or anything bad about electric cars, they literally jump at you. It's because it's all for the greater good. And EV take up right now worldwide is 9% of vehicle registrations. Imagine how much energy we'd need if governments get their way and force us all into them. Most of that, if not all, are just lies or grave exaggerations because in 2023, here in Norway at least, none of that even applies anymore. I mean, 
owning electric cars, driving electric cars, as I've said, as I've experienced, 77,000 electric cars here in Oslo, growing at an alarming rate every year and sweden is catching up quickly denmark is catching up even germany i'm amazed at how many more chargers and electric cars there are in germany now versus two years ago but i think the big scare for most people when it comes to electric cars is street parking and charging i think that is the big scare and the title of today's video the real problem with electric cars for most people is street parking and charging and not being able to charge. But with 77,000 electric cars in Oslo, again, growing at an alarming rate, is it really an issue? Well, let's find out. But before we do find out, I just want to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor, Elton, the most awesome charging app if you live in Norway, Sweden, Finland, or Denmark. And this video actually wouldn't be possible without them because the data I'm about to share you, the number of slow, and fast and lightning chargers in Oslo actually comes from their database because their app lets you charge at almost all charge point operators in all of these countries, but it has all of the chargers in the app. So you can still find them where they are, check out speed and all of that, navigate to them, even though you can't start the charging with their app. So, so that's pretty awesome. I mean, a complete database and this video wouldn't be possible without them. So if you want the best charging app on the market and you live in any of these countries, go to the link down below and download the Elton charging app from there. Within the city limits of Oslo, there are 5,828 slow chargers. This is what we would consider a home charger. Around half of these are operated by the city itself and the other half are operated by other CPOs or charge point operators. These 5,828 slow chargers are publicly available either as street parking spots or as public parking spaces attached to housing estates. That means 7.5% of all EVs in Oslo can be charged at home for those who street park. This does not include the thousands of private home chargers attached to private parking spots and apartment buildings. That may not sound like much, but from driving through Oslo on a Friday, it doesn't seem to be a problem at all. The streets are full of EVs and public street charters are not close to being full or occupied. A very important factor to this and why this likely isn't going to change much moving forward is the fact that there are only around 40,000 street parking spots in Oslo. And even though Oslo is the fastest growing city in Europe, that number is not going to increase. Actually, the city of Oslo reduced the number of parking spots, street parking spots, by 5,000 since 2016. There are no mass protests. There are no uproars. The struggle of owning an electric car in Oslo isn't really a thing. I don't know a single person who complains about this. The charging infrastructure is improving every day. The city of Oslo is committed to building 2,000 public slow chargers the next 10 years. For those who want to charge faster though, Norway has the most expansive fast charging network in the world outside of Oslo. Fast chargers within the city limits are also quite amazing. With 320 to 100 kilowatt chargers, 113 100 to 150 kilowatt chargers, and a whopping 200 150 kilowatt plus chargers. Many of the old DC fast charging stations in Oslo are going to be upgraded and updated in the coming years. So we are probably going to see closer to 1000 DC fast chargers within the next 5 to 10 years. From the footage I'm showing, the DC fast chargers of Oslo are far from operating at full capacity. Sure, there are going to be days where there's more traffic than others, and charging then may be more frustrating than other days. And yes, fill your car with petrol is faster and easier, but nobody ever said EVs were going to be as convenient as internal combustion engine cars. But that gap in convenience is getting smaller every year and every day. I do recognize that there are nuances and details and specifics I did not dive deep into in this video. Complete topics I just completely glossed over and that is because I do want to make more videos 
diving into more topics here on the channel, videos like this. In this video, I specifically wanted to talk about the last problem, the last hurdle, in my opinion, to be solved when it comes to the transition to electric cars. And not a lot of people in a lot of countries can talk about this because Norway, we are at the front. So what is happening here is what's gonna happen in your country in two years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, depending on where you are on this you know, journey to fully electrification. And in my opinion, that is people who live in the inner city, who street park, but don't have home chargers. This seems to be the last problem which is prioritized. And that makes complete sense. That makes complete sense because people in the city don't buy as many cars. People in the city don't use their cars as much. And also people in the city tend to spend less money on the cars they buy. So people who live outside of the cities, in the suburbs, traveling between cities, that is the people who have been prioritized first in Norway and in other markets. But when I started writing this video and sketching it out and, and, and starting to film it and you know, putting it together, I thought I knew how this was going to end. I thought it was going to end kind of like, it's somewhat problematic, but it's going to be better in the future. But I'm surprised at how many electric cars there are inside the city of Oslo. I mean, you saw the footage, it, like car after car after car. When you're looking for for electric cars, they're, they're everywhere. But since I live in Norway, I may be a little bit just desensitized. It is kind of funny. It is kind of funny. But, you know, all of the public charters, street parking charters I went to, were not even close to full capacity. And also none of the DC fast charters. And the fact that Oslo aren't building more parking spaces, they're actually taking away parking spaces, this is going to help the transition to electric cars even more, even though that, you know, share uh, percentage, which is now at 37%, is going to grow and grow and grow. As long as they keep building at the rate they're building, public charters and DC fast charters, it's, it's not going to be a problem at all. And also in the meantime, electric cars are going to get more efficient. So you're going to have to charge them less. They're going to be charging faster also. So at, at some point, we're going to get to where the convenience gap between a combustion engine car and a, an electric car is so small that it's not even going to be an argument anymore. So guys, I, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope we have a lot of new viewers here on the channel also. This is a type of video that I've never done here on the channel before. People who have been watching my channel since day one or for years may be a little bit surprised about this video because it is very different to other videos I do here on the channel. But I've been wanting to make a more, I don't know, documentary style video, writing. I never write my videos, scripting them. This was scripted, write, written and you know, put together and I wanted to do it in a specific way. So I think it's pretty good. But I mean, if you're used to watching like people who inspire me, like Johnny Harris or, or Lemino, real cool documentary channels, you may think, yeah, I'm kind of amateur. But either way, I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please share a like down below and a comment because then I know I can invest more in time, more time and love into these videos because to be honest, this video took me almost a week to make. <laughs> yeah. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.